seems that the middle films of a planned trilogy are always going to be fighting an uphill battle. When a trilogy is announced beforehand, and everyone knows that there will be a third movie coming, it's hard for the makers of that middle film to really tell a compelling story because we, as an audience, know that the larger con conflict will most likely not be resolved and characters will stay alive. I don't know if there's any tension, there are any stakes in that in that middle film, and therefore we kind of disassociate and check out from it. Of course, you may have the outliers like Empire Strikes Back, but a majority of the time a middle film is going to suffer from its placement in the series. This is something that comes to mind when watching Halloween Kills. At least in 2021, following an incredibly successful reboot of the series, Halloween Kills had to follow up the first truly great sequel of the franchise while also setting up the next film, the already announced Halloween Ends. The film was divisive, to say the least. While it certainly upped the body count and brutality of the previous entry, the story really never hit an ending point. All those issues that I talked about were present in it. When the film ends, the finale is set up and the pieces, pl the pieces are in place, but one could argue that those pieces could have been put in place far sooner. Then you have a script that is rather messy with an overload of cliche one-liners. Halloween Kills wasn't as highly regarded as its 2018 predecessor, but I don't think that's entirely fair. If you go back to my review of that film from last year, you'll see that I loved it when it came out. And after rewatching it to get ready for the Halloween ends this week, that is true. While Halloween Kills is messy with a little too many things going on for its own good, the movie is, is frantic, it's chaotic, brutal, and a truly delightful film to watch. It is not the most well-made film in the series, but I still think it's one of the best. What I love about the movie is how it never slows down. There's just this constant energy going on throughout it with everything just feeling like it's continuing to move forward. Some might say that this can't be true as the story doesn't progress, but I beg to differ. Halloween Kills does move the plot forward, it's just that it does so subtly. It's not with these big events, it's within the characters. The characters change through the movie, and we see them respond to what happened in the story prior. Halloween 2018 ended right after the Strode women believe they have finally beaten Michael, and they are being driven away to safety from the burning house they've trapped him in. In Halloween Kills, we see them start to realize what happened. They are confronting their, their joy and pride in what they think they have done, and the subsequent disappointment when they realize that Michael is still alive. And they are also realizing the losses they have endured in the process. We didn't get to see them kind of come down from that adrenaline high in the previous movie. And this one, we actually get to see that. And that's something that I think is missing in Slashers. We see Karen and Allison grieve the death of their husband slash father. And each one responds in a different way with Allison going out to join the mob to hunt Michael down. And Karen choosing to stay at the hospital with Lori and keep safe. We see Lori herself struggle with being sidelined from her injury she sustained in her fight with Michael. We see Officer Hawkins continue to mourn his inability to kill Michael in 1978 and the guilt that he carries with that. And we see the entire town of Haddonfield react to the news that this boogeyman is back. And that thread about the town's reaction is what stands out to me with Halloween Kills. This movie isn't just about Lori versus Michael, it's about how the whole town responds to their collective trauma, and we see that through the flashbacks of the night that Michael first attacked Lori and her friends. We see how this town was also exposed to Michael and his murders, and we see how the town as a whole has been affected by that. The characters from that original movie bring their own anger and sadness to the mix. We have Tommy come back, Marion, Lindsay, Lonnie, all these different people, and we see how their pent-up rage boils over and how it causes its own set of issues. It's a Halloween story that talk, tackles something larger, and while it doesn't necessarily knock it out of the park, I love that it at least swings for it. You know, I could do without some of the overly dramatic one-liners, especially that Tommy has, and the dialogue that really drives home the message of the film and beats it over your head. 
but I can't help but appreciate the fact that we finally see the town of Haddonfield stand up for itself and fight back against Michael, albeit in stupid and wrong ways. And then that's not even to mention the kills of the movie. If you're a fan of slashers like me, this is Michael Myers at his scariest and most brutal. A lot of people would point to the Michael in the Rob Zombie films, but this one, I think, takes the crown from him. Whereas Zombies, Michael was certainly sort of brutal and animalistic and just slaughtering people. It came from a place of anger. There's this emotion behind it. The Michael in this movie is still that senseless beast that is killing for no reason. He feels no remorse. He moves from person to person. And really, he's just killing because he crossed their path. And that, to me, is not only scarier, but it's more engaging. It presents Michael as a, a different kind of character, one that is truly terrifying. And Michael slaughters a good chunk of people in this movie. And I would say that, that it is no less than what Rob Zombie's Michael does. I mean, he, re he legitimately kills people in some crazy and admittedly ridiculous ways, and that, to me, is a hell of a lot of fun. Halloween Kills is the kind of movie that I understand why people have an issue with it, but I just, I love it. It absolutely suffers from being the middle film in a trilogy, and it whiffs on more than a few things. But god damn it, it tries something. It tries to be more than the sequels that have come before it. It's the same reason I have a fondness for the only film in the series to not revolve around Michael, Season of the Witch. It's weird, it's unique, it's different, and it stands out because of that. And by the time the movie is over and Michael has killed Karen, Laurie's daughter, after having again felt like they had won, it sets up the final conflict between him and Laurie, and it gives it that sort of Empire Strikes Back feeling of hopelessness and despair at the end. And I personally cannot wait to see what happens when Halloween Ends comes out this week. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you did. As always, be kind to each other and each other's opinions. And as always, please like the video, share it with anyone, subscribe to our channel, help us keep growing. And for all your video essays on movies, reviews, whatnot, you know what it is. Always check back here with Scoot Pash.